industry ever so often we get patients who are not as easy to work with. I myself have experienced plenty of this. There are a lot of people out there who don't want help or aren't very good at asking for help. So this video is for all healthcare providers. I am a speech therapist, but you can be a doctor, a PT or OT or a nurse or anything else um, and come across this. So I'm going to discuss some tips in working with these patients uh, to be able to actually work with them and get something done, especially for therapy. So before I start, um, I do want to say that you can't win them all and sometimes it's not going to work and you just have to do your best. Okay, so the first suggestion I have when working with a challenging client is to listen to them. This can seem like a really hard thing to do when you're in the fast-paced work environment of healthcare, but trust me, it's good advice. The people who are challenging and are grumpy have some needs that aren't being met. Now, they're going through a lot. Chances are they had to go to the hospital and now they're maybe in a skilled nursing facility or something and you're there, you walk in, you're a stranger and they might feel like you have no idea what they've been through. So, what I want you to do is to give them the opportunity to discuss whatever they want to discuss and this is what that looks like. So tell me about it. And then you wait and give them three minutes three minutes of your time, which I know in that case feels like forever. One minute feels like forever when you know you have maybe 10 minutes or half an hour or a finite amount of time with that person. But I'll tell you this, if you sit through that few minutes of active listening and just listening to what they have to tell you, it's going to allow you to be able to work with them. They'll be able to discuss their feelings and in this discussion, it may even bring up ways for you to connect to the person, ways for them to trust you. The next suggestion is to find things that you both have in common. There's a really good chance that you are younger than your patient. Um, maybe you're of a different socioeconomic class. From my perspective, I have a master's degree and I know what's best for this person, but they don't care about that. So you need to find some commonality. Uh, one thing that I'll do is when I'm getting to know someone and I'm establishing that rapport, if they mention something about uh, the war or uh, maybe their work, I will think, oh, my, my grandpa did that. My grandpa worked in a cannery if they did some type of warehouse work. Or I'll try and find some connection that makes you more human to them. They're saying, oh, you're a granddaughter or a grandson, and you might understand my perspective now a little bit better. So to recap so far, we've got patience, establishing good rapport, giving them the opportunity to tell you how they're feeling with an open-ended questions. Next, we have finding things that you have in common so you can build trust. The next thing is, and I think it's so important for this topic, which is being authentic. So if you heard that this patient is challenging, you're going to go in with that knowledge. What I suggest is you go in naively. Act as if you've never heard anything about this client ever before. Hi, I'm so-and-so. How are you today? <laughs> and you're not going to set things off on the wrong foot. If you've already been working with this person and it's been a challenge, and we've all been there where it makes you feel bad, it's stressful, it's not fun. What I want you to do is find some way to make it meaningful for you because I don't want you to just fake it till you make it. Do a little bit of that, but if you fake your excitement and happiness, that does not go over well. People know that you're faking. Don't have a fake big smile the whole time. People don't like that. It rubs them the wrong way. So what you want to do is really, and you may have to reach, but find something to appreciate about that session. For me, I've made goals for myself where I've said, I'm going to make him smile once, or 
I'm going to teach her one thing. We're going to have one educational moment in this session, which seems like not a lot, but for this person, that might be good enough. If you're thinking about that, and if that is enough to make you happy and content for that session, then you're going to more truth, truthfully and authentically be calm and content and happy, and they're going to feed off of that. If you're distressed, they're going to feel that and they're not going to talk to you. So try and find a way to appreciate the session and that will bring out a more authentic, happy self. And then the last thing I have to say, if all else fails, usually they have a good connection with someone in their family. And if you can talk to that person, they'll give you advice or ask them to be in the session with you. Um, you can even say, you know, so-and-so said if you work with me today, that would be great, or, or somehow tie them in. Um, and then obviously there's always the educational piece of just saying, telling them truthfully, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. Uh, if you educate them and the family on the purpose of why you're there, it can usually help to ease some of the dissonance. So I hope that this helps with your next challenging patient. The best of luck to you. I put out a new video every week, so please subscribe to my channel, like, and comment. Bye.